<laughs> what is good? This is Night of NYTypical.net. Follow me on Instagram at NYTypical and Twitter on as Ara of Night. A R A H O F N Y T. Anyways, what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today is who gives a fuck about Qatar? Now, that's not even supposed to be like some sweeping controversial statement but um i was thinking about this like for time and i just thought i would switch on the camera <laughs> to like just give a couple thoughts out there like so excuse me if the video is not especially or the way i speak isn't especially you know as eloquent as it usually is uh i was introduced to fashion via couture this is the thing <laughs> or Ut Couture or Ut Couture or Ut Couture or Halt Couture, like however you say it, yeah. That's how I was introduced to it. And these times, yeah, I knew um, Galliano and McQueen's dresses before I ever knew their names. Like, I knew um, McQueen at Givenchy and I knew Galliano at um, Dior. And I knew Tom Ford at Gucci before, like, their names were ever so much so apparent to me, right? And, like, Tom Ford was one of the first designers. Like, I, I say the story all the time, but, yeah, Tom Ford was one of the first designers I made. Like, I kind of got my Googles on, innit? First of all, I would, I would, like, give a quick overview on Couture. But, like, literally, my holy Couturier, like, actually hinges on people actually caring about art and fashion at the same time. So when I start talking about Charles Worth, when I start talking about Charles James, when I start talking about Balenciaga, all of these cats, I'm talking about couture particularly. Like it has nothing to do with like the fashion that somebody can wear on the roadside. It's literally um, all about their couture lines. And that that's like the main thing. But like, <laughs> let me get a couple notes up. <laughs> because literally i was actually writing an article yeah and with it i was just i was just thinking like the two times like let's just go to like women like considering men in fashion is a new thing it's almost a phenomenon to be honest but men in fashion or women in fashion i should say there's two times let's say the average woman wears like couture right that's at a coming out party or her wedding so that's like dilettantes debutantes um duchesses all advisors visas however you want to put it right they wear couture at their coming out party or like at least that's what i think they do like let me, let me be very simple and plain i'm not part of that system i am not one of the elite <laughs> i'm not part of the global elite yeah <laughs> so please allow me but that is the part time that they wear couture now um for the one percent of the one percent of the one percent yeah these people wear couture almost at every event like couture is worn for them and like there's rules to couture as well so like the syndical de la haute couture have to say like that <laughs> the syndicate they're like okay so yeah they have rules right and their rules stipulate let me get them up really like uh, <laughs> uh designs must have one or more fitting and be made to order for a private client right and a couture team or couture atelier must have 20 or at least 20 staff members right <clears throat> and each season the couture house must show 35 looks 
of evening wear and daytime wear. <laughs> that's what that's what I know, yeah, about Qatar. But to me, it almost seems like it's to uphold a particular Parisian tradition and to at least um pay the um pay the atelier staff really and truly like if i'm if like if i'm going to look at it in a certain light that is what it is like couture was never like like when we go back couture is not about the art it's not it's about someone who's aristocratic or someone who wants who's a designer and for you to be cool as a designer back in these days or as a fashion designer you had to have aristocratic high class like royal or whatever it may have you clients like L charles were had a swarovski dress in 1905 Givenchy had a multi-cut like wait who wore the uh, multi-colored Givenchy ball gown again like uh who's this again like uh jackie kennedy on the on the presidential visit um to paris she wore a white Givenchy ball gown with multicolored gems or whatever like <laughs> now, i was never i wasn't meant to get to that but this is the point like the kennedys are also like part of the eh, the echelon that is not to be spoken about right so imagine my um well, imagine our understanding of fashion right our understanding of fashion is you wear what you want because you're that type of person right and like uh, a lot of, this is this is the thing with the advent of ready to wear it separated fashion houses so a lot of fashion houses are ready to wear houses before they're ever like um couture houses before a couture house had a particular clientele they were um they would come with like it's not it's not even about like um the elitist like because that's the word we use now but the the client that they were after would have come from a certain system like oscar de la renta is from south america but he made clothes for people from a certain system people go to certain designers right um for specific things and that designer s speaks to them in particular ways like um someone that wears moala goes to moala because she speaks in a certain language design language for that particular person someone wore slp because eddie slamon he spoke in a particular design language who else is there like the Jacquemus person or like <laughs> that was just off the top of my head <laughs> the Dior person I should say or the LV person or the off-white person so on and so forth alas I actually have to get this particular part out there because it is absolutely crucial like considering I'm writing a book and I'm doing all of these things I really wanted to make sure that I didn't leave out something so paramount to the idea of fashion today right so the distinction between the past era and this era is literally money and sentiment right so post the war there was an injection of money and then with the fall of the economy and the fall of um the soviet union brought about um certain sentiments in europe and japan so um that's how we get anti-fashion i couldn't afford uh, to buy any tights every time i went out to get rid of trousers so i decided just to leave them and just rip and rip and rip yeah you want it 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 you want, 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 you want
You consider yourself a goth? Um, no, I suppose other people would, but I don't. Like we just go for more kind of vampire sides of things. <laughs> <laughs> You're a not as well, is that no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> what are you? Um, nothing. Anti fa anti 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 fa anti fascism anti fashion anti fa. I see what they did there. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I I I I have to talk about this. Because what happened between like um the eighty seven stock market crash and the and the fall of the Soviet Union slash um the dissolution slash the fall of the Berlin Wall was the sentiment of the youth right and there was this big fight between the mindsets of the people that were talking about um that were talking about what we care about and what we look like and what we want right now because all of this money left and like the, the the idea so even the idea of so modernism i should say re-injected itself so there was a percent let me not get too deep into it right same for the book please support my book so <laughs> so that these places but two things happened right anti-fashion got made and the creation of these um conglomerates kering lvmh swatch right these these are so like um the high class bourgeois and aristocracy like they could continue to like promote elitism together basically that that is how i'm putting it because uh, much of the sentiment of elitism is through the persistence of the luxury idea and sentiment however with what we do today like between the last generation our generation our generation starts 2015 the past generation is like um that era so 87 to like 91 like i would say a i would say 91 especially but like when you talk about punk when you talk about grunge when you talk about um like when well like anti-government anti like all of this stuff right all of the they rose from then so that era so people started like designers our our designers all the cool designs we talk about now and hindsight is 2020 for the old god but for us that it's legitimate right these old god just back then they hated they they despise the idea of Margiela ray and the og and um who else westwood um Demi Lamista, um, Beer and Donk, um, rap, the, I, the, this, it goes on. Turn that shit up! Turn that shit up! Come on! Hey, yo, it's like that show! type dark type black type romantic type um death and fall that nah, all of that so there's two sentiments that um are revised within our generation right um the sentiment of luxury which is upheld by the people who continue on the bourgeois high class aristocracy elitism and the other part which is the peer-to-peer -peer sentiment so i dress what i see this is the i am not aspiring to youth or the nostalgic youth such as et al gucci i am dressing 
um, my friends, I'm dressing what I care about, what I see. Et au mawalala. So it's two, it's like literally two different things. There's the Martin Rose of the world, and then there's the Jacques Mousse. It's though it's worlds apart, like lich in just in the identity of the philosophy like a lot of these designers today don't have a personal philosophy they are deciding upon which um lane they're going to go into and those are the two lanes that exist today this is 100% going to be its own video but i really wanted to say that because with obviously the changing of the guard between now and like 2015 like that is the like us prevailing that's like let me say let me say it like this us prevailing in the idea that i can wear um a tech fleece and, and talk about couture i can wear a durag and talk about couture but i also understand that i also have references for what my peers do and what streetwear is and what, what streetwear actually is like that is the distinction so yeah man back to the video <laughs> Molala does not make um she doesn't make uh whatchamacallit she doesn't make clothes for aristocrats right she makes clothes for people that are of her ilk right like drake wore her stuff um solange wore her stuff right but drake and solange is not the original clientele like the clientele is her people's and like even then it's like her people's can't necessarily just buy like a um, a molala piece right and it's almost the same with like um richard amnissi from the south africa and orange culture from um from nigeria it's like these guys put like their clientele are american first because normally the the people from a certain system in nigeria and south africa see i like i like to use the system they buy Vuitton, they buy Gucci, they buy um Dior, they like they they buy European stuff, but um the two Orange Culture and Richard Nissi, they have clientele from America and Europe before they ever have clientele in America in Nigeria or Africa I should say. So yeah, it's like um it's this idea, right, that you want um, a certain high class clientele first and then like the people and then that gives you your name and then people start noticing you or buying from you but today there are certain people with certain houses certain brands certain fast fashion places let's 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 actually make it clear and cut it's like with the right amount of marketing you can afford to have people that don't even make that much money buy your stuff because that is the, that is where fashion has degenerated into like there's two ways to see it there's either fashion has democratized itself or clothes have democratized themselves because normally or should i say back when couture was a thing or back when it was pre-couture people would make their own clothes but now i can wear somebody else's clothes <laughs> but it's not it's not it's not overpriced for me right so yeah like i can wear a name brand like name when, like when where i'm from people call it name brands or designer they don't call it um <laughs> they don't call it high fashion like it's it's about oh you like designer designer <laughs> like that's that is the language that we use but yeah I see I see this yeah and I'm just and then I ask myself this question like who actually gives a fuck about couture like who who gives a monkey <laughs> and and genuinely like um with the syndical de la haute couture you have all of these places that um that are made to feel like them having a position at the syndical de la haute couture um you are somebody or something like and it's almost more so like a mark it's, it's literally a loss leader for the elites so that hopefully someone can see your gown and like 
like you have you need one client one client that's a thirty five thousand dollar piece or something and once that one client wears it at um, a charitable event or a um what's the other event like just like a celebrity event or something like that like then you're kind of out there in a particular type of way <laughs> but pre 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 all of this yeah balenciaga he made clothes like he literally he literally scorned he's he would scorn and scoff at the idea that a normal person like me would want to wear his clothes or a like or me buying a dress for like it's it wasn't even about the money it was about the esteem and ilk you came from so i asked the question again who gives a monkeys about couture it's literally almost a it's, well it's not an art form right it's a technical position i was going to call it an art form it's a technical position in the parisian um ateliers it has nothing to do with um the the way and ability somebody has in even making fashion because there are techniques you can use that um that aren't couture techniques they are ready to wear they can be ready to wear techniques and then there's a level up called couture techniques like there's literally couture sewing which i'll get through but i just had to like get it out of my system to say even like who cares first of all like i know i care but at the same time i don't have this airs about myself where it's like if you ca- if you don't care or if you care about couture if you don't care about couture you're not smart enough it's literally there isn't a space like even in menswear like they say there's men's couture but really and truly it's not like you're pretending like you're almost pretending because like with what women's couture is like reaching out and being creative and showing people new ways men's couture don't even do that i'm not even going to name a men's couture house because it it is just um it's just a pretentious ideal to be honest with you because they're not pushing the boundaries and a man in a dress isn't pushing the boundaries i'm sorry like not to me like we've been doing that for years like if you if you really know you've been you we've been doing that for years so to me particularly yeah who gives a fuck about couture i think that's all i have to say about it that's kind of my rant really (laughs) yeah like uh comment down below like what your thoughts are especially about what i said because i'm i'm even a bit nuts right now (laughs) but yeah but till then this has been whoo chris about his bodyguard (laughs) the definite andy mcquade's music himself (laughs) all right man Follow me on IG at NYC.